Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Hearthstone deck spotlight. My name is Tommy Wave, and today we'll be taking a look at another Tice deck. This time we'll be taking a look at Tice's Buff Beast Hunter. Uh, Hunter has been the, the new hotness with the latest expansion, getting a lot of uh, fun new tools, but also uh, being one of the best, one of the higher recipients when it comes to the most recent nerfs as in it got no nerfs the class is still just as good um, and part of the reason uh, for that is that Hunter is probably one of the best aggressive decks and also one of the be better controlling decks late game value decks with spell hunter and these types of things but what we have here is more in the former category in the aggressive deck aggressive mid-range you could say um, and it's got a little bit of a late game plan with uh, master's call and dire frenzy i think this is a really cool combination we can dire frenzy up maybe a hound from our uh, unleash the hounds a crackling razor maw you know, a Huffer from an Animal Companion, any one of these one drops, Spring Pour especially. Uh, and then we can use Master's Call to rip through our deck, draw all these buffed up beasts, and um, make sure that we always have gas going into the later part of the game. Uh, it can also be used in kind of that mid game to just stock up, make sure you've got enough tools in order to last you to the point where you can resolve a Rexa or you can resolve Dire Frenzy and things like that. So I really like that kind of. Uh, uh, game plan that the deck's got going on because outside of that the shell is really just typical uh aggressive mid-range hunter uh we've got diamonds we've got spring paws uh tice has gone for timber wolf instead of the um the uh jeweled macaw or instead of the the other hatchling the one that reduces the cost of a beast on death rattle it's instead gone for timber wolf which i think is quite interesting especially because they've cut down to one unleash the hounds um, and usually, I, I think that's like, a, if you go to Timberwolves, you go to Unleash the Hounds. Um, so that's pretty interesting. We've also got Candleshot Hunter's Mark in here instead of Headhunter's Hatchet. Uh, I think Headhunter's Hatchet, we were talking about it before, 5k in the chat mentioning that uh, Headhunter's Hatchet probably better in the matchups where you want to be the aggressor in. Uh, whereas Candleshot, obviously a lot more reactive. Candleshot better against these, you know, even... Uh, even Warlocks, Control Warlocks, even Paladin, uh, even Shaman, any of those types of decks. Uh, whereas Headhunter's Hatchet, very good against, you know, all manner of Odd Paladin. Uh, in the Mirror, the, the Beast Mirror, uh, Beast Hunter Mirror, I think the Headhunter's Hatchet is a little bit better there, but though very much harder to get the, the plus one durability on it. So I like that. We've also got tracking in here, which is going to help us find our Rexar. It does seem like we're going to be leaning pretty heavily on Rexar to do a lot of that uh, late game heavy lifting, um, even though we do have the Dire Frenzy Masters call in here. Uh, so other than that, very typical Beast Hunter stuff. We've covered Beast Hunter many, many times this expansion so far. Budget decks full-on tier one decks uh if you're interested in seeing more beast hunter stuff go check out all the other videos that i've got on youtube uh covering those decks but uh without further ado we'll jump in play some of tice's buff beast hunter for the might of the elves okay up here against the warlock I'm gonna go for the full mulligan here not super not super happy about it but hopefully we can pick up a diamond uh, turn one tracking I'll hopefully help the curve out. We have turned our curve it's even into our warlock. Strength. It was semi tempting to keep the uh, hunter's mark there. I think I would have kept a candle shot, but not a hunter's mark on its own. Are we supposed to play the timber wolf like this? Are we waiting for some kind of combo? Hmm. Ooh! I like that one. Guess if our opponent has a defile though, we get uh, wrecked. Yeah, we definitely shouldn't have played this Timberwolf, hey? Doom. I mean, we could go for Animal Companion, and we're sixty-six percent chance to uh to kill this Doom Sail. Uh, 
Or we could just tracking Light hero power two. set up for later. I think we'll do that. Second tracking. Ugh. No balls. I mean, you know what would have happened. We would have played the Animal Companion and we would have definitely gotten Misha. Uh, I'm going to take this tracking here. Does our opponent have the Mountain Giant? Is this the is this the game where we don't play any minions so that they can't spell stone them? To shoot. I think this is the game where we don't like we hope they don't have shroom brewer I mean they actually haven't they can't have possibly charged the spell stone up Rexar. So we can hero power, kill command, which does five. So it puts them on three. And then if they have just Shroom Brewer, they go to seven. So if we go Spring Poor Hero Power, the other kill command, that would kill them. So let's do that. So this beats Shroom Brewer. I think it also... If they haven't charged a spell stone. I think we're good. Suicidal Spring Paw? Yeah, I guess we could have thrown a... Thrown a Spring Paw. At the, uh... The giant. There's a Shroom Brewer. Shields up. Got him. Tasty one. So there was a couple of decisions there. A couple of really tight decisions. You know, we could have gone for the 66, the 66% uh, chance, the two in three to kill that doomsayer, maintain our board. I think the thing that made me not want to do that is that our opponent can always fire back with a hellfire or a um, or a defile, and it would kill a lot of our tempo. Like, if we hit um, Huffer, it kills our entire board. If we hit Leok, it kills everything except Leok. Leaving it on one. So then our opponent would be... Uh, would be in a okay position. But we had so many kill commands and things. I feel like we... I feel like we played well. Anyway, GG's. Well played to our opponent as well. Be on to the next... Up against the rogue, so definitely don't want Timberwolf in our opener here. Happy to send everything else back, try and pick up a Diamol, Crackling Razor Maul. I think tracking is kind of a. Uh, happy to have it if there's no other one drops, but I don't think I would keep it. It is Odd Rogue. Hmm. It's going to be very tough. Odd Rogue competes. Exactly where we don't want it to compete, which is on board. We're probably gonna have to coin this uh, flanking strike out. Is our opponent tanking on here? Is this the tank where they're like, "Oh, I just threw a cold blood. Do I cold blood or do I uh, do I dagger?" Attacking with the dagger is curious. Might mean that they don't have Hench Clan Thug to follow up.
I think we'll offer up a Razor Maw so that they dagger in. Don't really want them to float the daggers. Great! That's... It's the best case scenario, so our opponent's going to uh, pass back to us. Clean out this flanking strike. Now our opponent's on 4 mana, so if they want to dagger up, they can only have 1 drops to to combine with whatever they want to do. Tark. Ugh. Ugh. That was a bit ugly. I don't know what- I guess I don't really know what we were hoping for there. But we've got a Dire Frenzy next turn. Hopefully- I think we'll Dire Frenzy the Crackling Razor more. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, Master's Call is definitely going to get us some resources. Opponents pushing the gas. And this is free kill though. You have to be a little bit concerned about a card like Myra's Stable Element. Vile Spine, of course, is always a concern. Second Fungal Mancer. There's a lot to be scared of here. And uh, Rexar is kind of buried in a pretty big pile of cards, so. Scale Bane. Yeah, well, Scale Bane's real good on this board. Hmm. I think we have to Master's Call. That was a very good rip. Like, we definitely needed uh, the Spring Paw to stay in the game, but the fact that we got a Razor Maw and the Razor Maw got us poisonous was super duper lucky. But you know what we say better lucky than good. The light protects me. Alright, gonna try and get us down real low. So, this is either Leroy, Myra's, I assume. How do we want to trade here? Is this lethal? Let's make sure it's not. It's 16. Um. So if they have Myris, they should be able to kill us. Although they've played both South Sea deckhands. 
and they can't Lero this turn as well. So, but they could draw two Deadly Poisons, which would be six. Oh, they're Baku! That's true, that's another card that does make uh, quite a lot of sense. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now they don't have a dagger up either. I think we should be good. Hunter is so high rolly that it isn't even close to the high roll. And it is not even close to the high rolliest. High rolliest. Oof. That was a tight one. That was a really, really tight one. I think our opponent played played well, though they made a couple of, uh, I mean, we can't really tell because we're not, we couldn't see their hand the, intel the whole time, but I think they may have made some mistakes that I think are a bit of, uh, kind of newbie traps when you, when playing odd rogue. Uh, and the main one is, if you dagger on two, you actually have to tank, you have to think about if you want to throw that dagger at the opponent's face. Is your opponent on a deck where you know, you're going to need to use your dagger to trade for turn three, four, five, six. And I think definitely in the odd rogue versus like beast hunter, mid-range beast hunter matchup, it's uh, definitely, you're definitely going to use that dagger to trade more often than not. So you kind of saw that um, we kind of pinched their mana a, a little bit by, you know, when they, by playing the crackling razor more on turn, uh, our turn three, at turn two, so that when our opponent deployed their fledgling and daggered in, they now were down a dagger. We were going to flanking strike their their three drop. So now we have a little bit of a board. Our opponent has a firefly, no dagger. They're on four mana, which is really awkward if you want to dagger back up, um, unless you have like deadly poison or something. So yeah, I think uh, our opponent uh, played well. Uh, I think we also made a couple of good decisions and got very lucky. So GGs. I never tremble. We never tremble up against the hunter. Uh, now keeping candle shot here is very interesting. If it's spell hunter, it's very bad. If it's beast hunter, it's quite good. I think we'll keep it. I think we will keep it. Mm. Oh my gosh. Diamol here to save the day. What does our opponent have? Are they secret planning? Are they tracking? They are tracking. Hmm, they have a secret. Secret's very dangerous right now. Do they want to coin the secret? They do. What is it? Is it Wandering Monster or is it Explosive? Death. Freezing? Snipe. Job done. Interesting. Hearthstone, heroes of skill and luck. Heroes of the dice roll. It's me, Sha. Hmm. Death comes. 
think we're just gonna hope that we can get there. Unfortunately, our draw was very low end. But they secret planned. They secret planned and didn't like find an explosive trap. All right, well, now we find out if we die. <laughs> What? What is happening? What is happening? Alright, I think our opponent just had the most awkward spell hunter draw you can possibly have. Um, and we had drew like almost all of our one drops. Uh, and luckily our opponent didn't find a wandering monster or an explosive trap or any manner of things that would have uh, dug them out of the situation. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess sorry to our opponent for... Uh, for the awkward draw, but we'll take a look at the buff Beast Hunter. Uh, I like this deck. I like this. Uh, feels like a bit of an alternative to uh, a lot of the other Hunter decks that are going around. They're either very, very mid rangey Beast, or they're very Spell Hunter, or they're not so much that hybrid kind of mid range Secret Hunter anymore. But I think that this uh, this Hunter deck slots in there. It has definitely reasons to play it over other decks you know i think candle shot hunter's mark can be very good in some matchups i think the uh you know the the masters called dire frenzy element of the deck is really really cool really interesting um in fact just dire frenzy on its own was, was quite good um there are some elements of the deck that i'm unsure of mostly timberwolf i think timberwolf is a little bit weak i'd like to see um yeah, you know, I, I'm still a very big proponent proponent of Diamol, Springpore, and Jeweled Macaw as the uh, the one drops of choice. Um, but I can re respect Timberwolf, and it definitely did a lot of work for us uh, in one of those games. That being said, Jeweled Macaw in the same situation would have been dynamite as well. So uh, big shout outs to Tice, of course, um, deck builder extraordinaire, streamer extraordinaire. Go check them out. Uh, also big thanks to. Uh, La Morte, who shared this deck over on Hearthpone. Uh, speaking of, all the links down in the description, so jump over there, give the deck a plus one, leave a lovely thoughtful comment, like I know you will. Uh, my name's Tommy Wave, all my links are down there as well, including a link over to Twitter, that's the best place to catch me, at Tommy underscore Wave. Uh, and until next time, stay safe, stay wavy, and, uh, I don't know, unleash the hounds. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that video, check out other ones over here, or come subscribe to the Wavepool for more excellent times.